We are in Bromley with the Bromley Y team, is that how to refer to you? Yes. Um, could you just introduce yourself briefly? Yep, I'm Emily Carter and I'm a wellbeing practitioner within the school's wellbeing service. Okay. And I'm Mark Sheldon, also a wellbeing practitioner in the school wellbeing service. Brilliant. And you guys have agreed kindly to share three tips for parents about how to support an anxious child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's tip number one? Um, tip number one I'd say is like giving the message that anxiety is really normal, that we all experience anxiety, you know, parents do, teachers do, doctors do, and kind of really familiarising your child with what anxiety feels like in their body. So when they know, when they complain of kind of feeling sick or having headaches, kind of, you know, getting them to understand that, that is anxiety and we can kind of work with that response through relaxation to, to bring it down and more, be more comfortable. So how can we help them to understand kind of what's normal and what that feels like, what sort of signs, you know, what might it feel like for a child? I think as a parent, to be prepared to give examples of situations where you get maybe a little bit anxious, I don't know, maybe um, competing in a race or something like that and that uh, you might get nervous and start breathing fast and, mm -hmm. and then your child will sort of relate to that. Yeah. Your own experience. And actually speaking about the physiology I think can be quite reassuring, mm -hmm. can't it? To know that yeah, that sickness or the, the fast heartbeat or the, the breathing change mm -hmm. can be can be quite helpful. Okay, so we're gonna normalise it and talk about the physiology. What's number two? Um, number two, we've, we thought about kind of thinking about what, what they actually are worried about. So sometimes we might make assumptions and think that, you know, a child is, you know, because they don't want to go to their grandparents, because they don't like whoever, you know, granny's bringing around that day, but actually it might be that they're worried about something happening to you. So I think you need to be quite a, a detective and ask questions about what the worry is and what they really think is going to happen. Um, and rather than reassuring, which doesn't really help the child to learn to cope with their worry, it's more about asking kind of helpful, open questions about, you know, what makes you think that's going to happen? What would you do if, you know, that did happen? That can help them to learn that they, they could manage and perhaps it's not as um, likely as they thought that the negative situation would happen. How can we um, kind of do that detective work? Have you got any ideas about the kind of questions or situations so we can get to the bottom of what's really worrying a child rather than, as you say, making an assumption that might not be right? Well, we often use the stop technique, um, which is um, we give a stop card also to a parent or to a young person. Um, in essence, that's helping someone to understand that if they can stop, take a breath, um, that they'll be more likely to be able to then think about what's happened and, and have a more balanced view of what's happened. And a very simple way with a child might be to say something like, um, OK, I, I hear that you're thinking that, but is there a different way of thinking about it? You know, what about the other side of the coin? And just help them with that mm, yeah. sort of technique. Mm, the kind of who, what, when, why, kind of open questions that don't, you know, leave a yes or no answer, but the child can actually be quite open with their response. You can usually get a richer answer. And is there any fear that if you start talking to the child about the thing that's worrying them, that you might make it worse? That's the thing that parents might worry about? Yeah, I mean, a lot of parents kind of raise this, but what we find is that perhaps children don't actually kind of catch anxiety if we're talking about it, and by talking about it, we can actually kind of reassure by talking about it rather than telling them it's going to be okay, or they're actually sort of learning. Okay, so we shouldn't be scared to talk about it? I don't think so, no. Okay, and what's your third tip? Um, the third tip would be sort of working with avoidance, so we know that when we feel anxious about things, um, that naturally we want to avoid them and not do them, because our anxiety then you know, doesn't exist or goes away, mm -hmm. um, but over time that sort of keeps anxiety going. So we need to kind of talk to parents about how they can work with avoidance by identifying perhaps a goal or a situation that their child is avoiding or is scared of yeah. and kind of building up slowly to that. So, you know, if a child is scared of um, a sleepover, for example, we might start by spending five minutes at a friend's house, mm -hmm. you know, building that up over time so they feel more comfortable. Brilliant. Have you got any other thoughts to add to that? Um, well, being a parent myself, I'd say, um, if I'm asking my child to try and give things a go, then it's important for me to model that myself. Mm, so yeah. a random example recently was you know, he wanted me to play FIFA with him, the computer game, yeah. and I'm absolutely rubbish at that. He's really good and um, you know he beats me about 10-0 and my <laughs> instinct is not to do that again, but yeah. to try and show him that, no, okay, I'm, I'm going to carry on doing that, even mm. though it feels a bit uncomfortable, because then it's more likely that he'll give a go to things yeah. that mm -hmm. he finds a bit anxiety provoking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so absolutely. So remembering we're wrong all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And letting your child, you know, know that you believe in them as well. So, you know, I know you can do this. I've seen you do this before. You know, what happened that time when you were so brave and it went so well and kind of capturing those moments that, that do go well. So stopping and celebrating the successes. Yeah. And what if it all Definitely. goes wrong? What if they try something and it's horrible? 
I guess, you know, that happens and that's important to kind of recognise that everyone has times when things don't go well. We're not looking to be perfect, we're looking to grow. So I think it's about thinking about that experience and that perhaps what was tricky and how can we build on that for next time and perhaps it was a little bit too challenging and how can we make that a little bit easier so you can manage. Perfect. Any other final mm. thoughts? Well, I think just with that one, just supporting, supporting them, you know, being with them as they're experiencing that sort of difficulty mm. and then helping them to think about, okay, how, they, how are they going to face that fear in a, in a sort of realistic next step rather than thinking about a great step, you know, what would be a small step towards yeah. them doing that and, you know, that they'll be okay and that's life. So our bonus tips are celebrate successes and find small steps. Mm. Brilliant. Thank you so much. That's really helpful. <laughs>